It's Nolan. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid J. Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. Hope everyone is doing well today out there. Uh, in this particular show, we're going to be getting into the baby and his uh, interview on Drink Champs. Now, of course, we're not going to be covering the whole interview because I ain't even watched the entire interview. But I do see that a portion of that conversation with Nori and DJ EFN has been circulating on uh, social media, particularly about him speaking on Megan Thee Stallion and Glorilla at the same time. But of course, Megan Thee Stallion is the portion that's really going up because they have, you know, a bit of history right now on the show. Um, Nori basically puts him in a situation and it's that, uh, quick time with slime game where they give you uh two options between two people or two things you pick one um and it's all good if you say both or neither the whole table has to take a shot right we all know this we've seen it and uh, whatever so they get to the question of Megan a stallion or glorilla now initially when they get there the baby picks glorilla says yeah glow Right. But then he says, now, nah, let me take that back. I'm going to choose them both. Then he proceeds to um, basically call both of them out for making whack songs with other male rappers and says that both of them need to come make some music with him. Then he centers in on making the stallion basically saying it's t- it, it, you come on and come home. Right. Let's make some more music together. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to the, you know what I'm saying? Because, of course, we know that they made, you know, some very popular records around the time when Megan was, when both of them were both kind of first hitting the scene, that 28, 2019 um, time period. Very popular songs that they collaborated on together. Unfortunately, after the Megan Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez shooting situation, um, the baby took it upon himself to not really support her, not really back her up like that. Um, he proceeded to do a music, uh, excuse me, do a song and music video with Tory Lanez in the midst of all of it, at the height of the controversy, at the height of the speculation of people trying to figure out what happened. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion was very angry. She was very disappointed. She figured that they had a better uh, working relationship than that. And then, he comes out and basically outs it that they had some sort of romantic interaction, right? Which we didn't know about. We didn't know anything about it. And he decided to come put that out on front street for the people. All right. Since then, there has been no talk between them to my knowledge. They are not really on good terms. Um, but he continues to speak on her for whatever reason. Um, so let's get to it. And then I'm going to pull up uh, the 2022 clip of him on Hot 97, where he basically tries to justify himself as to why he came out with that information on his song Boogeyman. But let's get to the drink champs part first. All right. I want to take this one. Go ahead. Megan or Go- Glorilla? Yeah, Glow. Get Get a Glow? Yeah, matter of fact, hold on. I'm going to do both. Shout out to May again. Where we at, Jamie? He's he been doing that already. Yeah. I'm going to do both. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good nigga, man. I got love for Meg. Me and Meg did some dope shit together, man. You yeah, know, and it's yeah, good I to see her rise, rise amongst hold on, the Solo, obstacles. Huh? Hold on, hold on. You did what I'm Solo. saying? So we're going to do both. Like, but I fuck with Glow. Glow, me nah, and you, you we, we overdo Glow. You bullshit. Give him a little shout out if you want to You know what? You know what I'm manifesting? I'm manifesting the song with... uh. Glow? With Glow and Meg together. And baby, I think that's the way me and Meg should pop back out. See, y'all got me drinking and shit. Whoa. I think that's the way me and Meg should pop back out because hold on, hold on, hold you know, hold I feel like ain't none of these niggas, and no okay, disrespect, get, 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 get. that y'all making music with Woo. can really embody that and bring this. Woo. But um, Cry Baby, Nasty, and Cash shit. Mm-hmm. What does that tell you? The, the, I, that, that, you going back to what I was saying about uh, the type shit me and Meg was making before. Yeah. Yeah. Come home, baby. You ain't gotta be making all that that lame shit with none of these other niggas. You can, we can come get it in, or we, you know, we cannot. Yeah, I make beautiful music. We make yeah. You gotta. I know how to talk that shit. For lack of a better term. Yeah. 
They're like Jay Z and Foxy Brown. Mm. I, I went too far. Nah. Sorry. No, you were not. Uh, that was accurate. Do, do you? Yeah, that was accurate. <laughs> do you? So I, I need to hear more Jay Z and Foxy Brown. I need to hear more. I'm open to it. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Meg and any other female out here doing their thing. I don't got nothing bad to say about no black woman doing their motherfucking thing, man. I ain't tripping. It's hard enough out here. You get what I'm saying? So. Cause you yeah. know when I when I dissect your music. But male and female rappers, like yeah. Like collaborating, like yeah, I mean, I ain't seen and I ain't seen nothing else. You see what I'm saying? Mm. I love to too. It ain't no thing. It ain't nothing where I'm like, yeah, I wanna. Well, you gotta make this happen, type man. What? It's all good. But yeah, nah, we make some shit. We talk that shit. You know what I'm saying? I would love to see. I love to see some. I love to do some shit with Glow too. Anybody, any female that, that like to talk that shit, you just go listen to how the fuck is this a mixtape, and you can keep, you know. I get, I, cause I could talk that shit, you know, by my goddamn self. That's why I, you know, did 14 song, no features. But no features. No features. Not, not, not one of them. It just sounds like you said 14. All right. So that's the baby on Drink Champs putting out his, uh, you know, his request for Megan Thee Stallion to come work with him again, for Glorilla to come and work with him for the first time as well. And I mean, to me, it's just like, bro. Are you completely self-aware? Like, <laughs> do you do you understand why you're in the position you're in right now? Do you understand why she's not working with you? Or, or do you just, like, think everybody forgot? Did you forget? Did somebody hit you up with the men in black? Like, bruh, <laughs> you went and worked with the man that shot her. Did the music video. You tried to downplay it and act like, hey, you know, that was, hey, I didn't put this out and I didn't know that it was going to drop on this day and all this stuff. But then you stood on it and then you took the stage with him at a at the festival, at the Rolling Loud shit. You know what I'm saying? Brought the nigga out when he wasn't even supposed to really be there because Megan had that whole restraining order situation. Like we're not going to act like shit that happened really just didn't happen. Like you was really out here aiding and abetting the situation and allowing that man to get some shine off of your situation, which mean that you were supporting whatever he had going on at the time. So what makes you think she would want to circle back and work with you, especially when y'all first was, was collaborating in the game Y'all both were in very similar positions, right? Y'all were both coming coming up. Both had new, fresh energy. Y'all happened to link on some records, had some chemistry. People really kind of looked forward to what y'all had going on. Y'all probably should have dropped a project at that opportune time, but I'm sure y'all figured y'all had plenty of time to make it happen, right? But since then... You've been taking nothing but L's. Now, of course, you do have a career. You still have fans. You still have supporters that do show up for you. But you are nowhere near the level of stock that you were at in 2019, early 2020, before all the extra stuff started happening, right? Like, number one, you haven't grown artistically. You haven't developed. Your music be sounding like, watered down versions of what you came with originally some of the shit you be putting out is barely mixed and mastered like it's it's all over the place when that stopped working your one flow stopped working you side you decide okay let me go hop on some classic boom bat beats that'll do it and you got on the classic boom bat beats with the same ass flow sound like you got them goblin at thanksgiving gobble 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 same shit. Nigga say, hey man, switch the flow. We've been asking you to switch the flow. We ain't had no problem with the beats. It was the flow. Nope. You ain't take no inventory on your flow. Now you done drop about three, four projects back to back to back over the years. Ain't nobody talking about them. Ain't nobody worried about them. I'm surprised you're still getting booked to do drink champs and shows like it. Right? I believe your mixtape just did about 10,000 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. They was just talking about this a few days ago, which Dochi just did 10,000. 
But Dochi don't got a debut album out, right? So that means you have had a severe regression. So basically when you say Megan and Glow, come work with me, let's come do collabs. You literally want them to come help you out the gutter. Now, again, you do have some fans. You got at least 10,000 that, you know, accumulatively supported your music. Awesome. And if you, if you're independent, I don't know, you might still be on Interscope for all I know. I don't know, but I don't see what the benefit is for these ladies who are out here selling 60 plus K first week. And Megan, I'm sure uh, the, that project is damn near gold by now. Right. She's about to drop her her mixtape. Tonight. Right. And we're going to see how that does. This is going to be her second project of the year. Glow dropped two projects this year. Now, do I am I crazy about all of the male artists that they've worked with? No. Do I feel like they need to come help you get out of the rut that you're in so that you could get back into the favor of the people? Because there's so many women out there that like Megan Thee Stallion. I said, nah, fuck that nigga. Because y'all were sharing a lot of fans. The niggas ride with you, a lot of them. Just like a lot of niggas roll with Tory. Right? And we pretty much identify those people as the incels within the hip-hop community. Unfortunately, we have a portion. But I don't see no benefit of none of these ladies coming and working with you. I don't see the benefit of nobody working with you unless they just really think you that good of a rapper, which you never were. Like there was a point in time I fucked with the baby, but it was really off that one project. The one with the nigga with the, on the top, you know what I'm saying? On the cover after that, you know what I'm saying? I thought Rockstar was cool. The remix was better than the original, but after that it was, it was a little shaky out here. You know, you've been out here trying to act like you on some mental health shit. But where in the mental health is it that you give a backhanded compliment to a woman in hopes of getting her to come work with you? Come on home, baby. Number one, to say come on home, you're implying that she would want to get it sounded to me like the, the tone of voice that you got into when you said that. It sound like you trying to entice her to come back to fuck with you in an intimate way. It didn't sound like music to me. Right? That's one piece. Another piece is come home. We ain't been cool in a minute. What what is there to come home to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that house is not a home, whatever house is it, it is with you, sir. Like them days is long gone. So coming out here asking for, for these ladies to come throw you a bone is absolutely asinine. Um, to say, yeah, come, come work with me rather than doing all that lame ass shit you're doing with these other niggas. So you got to insult me in order to, to, uh, to give props. Since, since when is that a thing? Right. Cause if is it if, if anyone else, if the if the roles were completely reversed, ain't no way he would accept that. Ain't no way he would let nobody speak on him that way. He would he would have an issue. He would either a get on Instagram live and say some shit, or probably come out and say, "All right, well you're gonna have to see me outside." So you know what I'm saying? Try to do pull intimidation tactics. To be like, all right, y'all nigga gonna have to fucking see me. Nigga wanna talk shit. All right, I'm doing lame ass shit. Well, let me see. Let me see how lame I am when you really see me. You know? But when it comes to both Megan and Glow, you say that they working with these lame niggas that, that can't compare to what it is that you bring to the table. Now, Nori, you really got outside your body talking about some goddamn Jay-Z and Foxy Brown. Now, if you wanna put Megan in the Foxy Brown category, you know, I think she still got a little while to go before we look at her in the Foxy light. We 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 definitely revere Foxy as an all time legend. Some people may are a lot of people may already see Megan in a, in the all time legend category. I'm not there yet, right? But to liken the baby to a Jay Z, 
is fucking crazy. And I'm hoping you got that, yo, this hove text right after that, after the shit hit the streets. Yo, this hove. What? What are you talking about? Yo, don't do that again. Don't say that again. Has your hairline gotten to your brain? We know you've been out here reproducing a hairline and, you know, going out and getting you whatever, whatever you got to do to make that shit happen. But now, don't let it get to your brain, okay? Now, let's go back, right? Because the baby, you wouldn't even have no issue with Megan Thee Stallion had you, well, you would have had less of an issue. Let me say that. Doing the song with the nigga, you know, doing the, the bullshit, that was already enough of an offense. She felt disappointed. I think you, you may have been able to come back from the disappointment you know, if that was the first, if that was literally the first offense. Now, I don't know everything that y'all had going on behind the scenes. But then you come out with this boogeyman record explicitly alluding to the world that y'all had an intimate relationship that none of us knew about. And then you implied that that was the real reason that she was disappointed and angry at you for working with him is because y'all had slept together in the past. We really only thought she was mad and felt the way about it because y'all had such a good working relationship that y'all would have wanted to continue to expand upon that and put out that project that people wanted from y'all. And it's like, you just go and ruin it. Fuck it. God damn niggas out here. Niggas out here just got just saving niggas for no reason when I've been shot. And then you double down and put this record out exposing private matters. And you think, yeah, I post the work again. Now, let me go back to the hot 97 situation when this happened so that we could get to the bottom of it. And, and, and just y'all can see the lack of accountability that he had, even when he was confronted with the question about this. I just want to put a button on the um, previous conversation about Megan. Megan. Yeah. So so why why put, include her in the verse on this record? It's why talk our, about it's their... been done for real, for real. Damn, they're going on a year, you know, when I say something. This is the just, boogeyman go record. Yeah, yeah, boogeyman. But was there sure. a reason that you felt like you should say that publicly, that you should, you know, indicate y'all had a relationship or indicate. some sort? Or sorry, clearly say. I mean, I ain't, you know, it is what it is. It ain't, you know. Like I say, I said a long time ago, keep me out of the business. Like, you know so, it was, so it was so it was a bit of a response. You're saying no, no, it's a song that's out right now. <laughs> Niggas can take it how they want. Listen, I gotta ask you. Yeah, no, I, 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 I have to ask you. I ain't tripping. It's a song that's out. You know what I'm saying? It's, but there is you like what the, it is. The, you, you could have left this bar off. You probably. wish I'd have left it off. Well, I don't. <laughs> Listen, like I feel weird about the whole thing. Megan thing. I, I, I yeah. feel it ain't I, nothing to feel weird about. No, it I just feel like public. Not, 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 not you. No, I don't mean you. Not I mean you and her. Y'all, whatever oh, okay, y'all okay. did personally. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, no, no, no. I just feel weird that uh, that a lot of men. I'm not referring to you, but a yeah, lot of men out there have yeah. seemed to try to gang up on her and bully. Yeah, that, so ain't, you, that ain't my case though. You get what I'm saying? Like, see, with me, but it comes off that way because now the song is out. See, see, with me, it's actually the it's actually the opposite, and I don't even want to stir stir all this shit up. And but I'm gonna respond. We'll move on. No, no, and we'll move on. Not because, yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to stir shit up, but see, with me, it's like a motherfucker could have never, like, anybody that could read in between the lines, I didn't, the shit was really already said, like, it, like, it becomes weird with me, like, when a motherfucker got a problem with me putting out a song, well, not even putting out, a nigga putting out a song that got a verse of mine on it, like, what you want me to do, like, you know, based on what y'all got going on, allegedly, that's none of my business, you see what I'm saying, like, motherfucker put me in their business, I didn't involve myself. Did anyone reach out to you to say, to where, hey? To where now it looked like, okay, boom, it's something going on. Like, nah, don't don't turn the women's empowerment shit on me. You get what I'm saying? Because you got what you got going on with Buddy. Like, that ain't even the case. Like, you know that ain't the case. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know why you upset with me being on the nigga song. You know why. You get what I'm saying? You and me know why. You, me, uh, and a lot of other, and a few other people, they know why. But I'm, you know, I, I got them... You know what I mean? Like I say, I kept it play. I ain't say shit about it. I tried to let shit, you know, boom, boom. You know what I mean? Boy, so you over, you're, you. you're, you're saying I felt like I needed to, to... No, it ain't It ain't even no, like, like when I made Boogie Man, I'm literally in the studio, regular night in the motherfucking studio sitting there. I, I record outside the booth. I'm recording. A couple people behind me this, this, this on my team and shit, cameraman, this person, this person. I literally, boom, this shit dropped. I heard the beat, shit dropped. I got them... Said that's the first line of the motherfucking song. I said the line, motherfuckers, and they're like, you know what I'm saying? I right, punched me back in. Kept going, kept with the straight face. 
and just made the song. But that's game. my point. It's is you song. knew it was going to get a reaction. <laughs> oh, wow. Come on. Now it's, you know. Wet, that's wet. my point. But everything I do get a reaction. It ain't, you know. Well, that's at the this time, part. it's like. You that's know, how I got into you, bro. You I mean. Me? Yeah. I Sad case there, man. You know, it's easy to say, oh, don't put me in it. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Don't turn the woman empowerment thing against me. And I understand to a degree to say, hey, uh, I wasn't involved with it. You don't have to put me in it. But you kind of inserted yourself into the situation, right? Because you offered help to the nigga while he was going through his, uh, you know, I guess, I wouldn't even say being canceled because he wasn't being canceled. But he was facing scrutiny. And while he was facing that scrutiny, you basically bailed him out. So you went out of your way to bail him out when you already had a connection with somebody that's connected to the situation and you, cho you chose your side. Now, whatever that is. Now, I'm not one of those you got to choose a side in a rap beef. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to rap beef, that's a little bit different. A lot different, as a matter of fact, than somebody physically being assaulted or shot in the foot. You know what I'm saying? That's totally different. And even if I were to hear of some shit, whether I knew it or not, I would separate myself from the situation and be like, hey, man, that's a that's a that's a very severe allegation. I'm going to sit back and let and let the truth come out before we able to, like, really move forward with this. Right. I think that's a pretty neutral way to like be respectful of both parties. If you have a relationship with both, just say, just completely remove yourself and say, Hey, I'm a, I'm a chill till y'all get this thing sorted out. So I know how I should move. But apparently even just doing something as simple as that is a bit too much to ask. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's really the, the biggest problem. And I'm, and I'm sure that's really the issue that Megan had was not so much that you were supposed to come to her defense or, back her up because i don't think she was asking for that it was just the fact that you allowed yourself to be used in a situation where you knew what the narrative was you knew what was going on you knew what happened everybody knew what happened and rather than say hey i'm gonna sit this out until all of this gets worked out you came to his aid rather than hers and she was actually the one that was injured so it makes you look extremely funny in the light. And the fact that you're even coming out speaking today or whatever day it was, because I think this interview actually been out a, a couple weeks. Now it's circulating. It's like, bro, you just kind of a weird nigga. Like <laughs> you got to accept your fate. And if the, if the fans really ain't chirping the way that they used to, uh, maybe you need to go ahead and give them a new number. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's time to get on your Mike Jones flow. Rather than the baby flow, I don't know, but uh, I don't I don't see her coming and 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 handing you the fishing rod to help you get back to the get back to eating. All right, let me know what y'all think about this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. I'm gonna catch y'all on the next one. All right, much love, respect, y'all. Peace. Yeah. King of my city and cul de sac. Uh. Coming, I swing like soldier rat. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came yeah. with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my shit. Yeah. Spinning the block for the gooder, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef for computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest, but drama I'm fully oppressed. Yeah. I was ready for years and they doubted me. Uh -huh. All of a sudden they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Uh -huh. Cross somebody came back with some battery, stand for my honor. But too raw, no gunner, packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.